I spend a lot of time studying entertainment, and over the last few years, things have been changing. Sites have emerged that act like a sort of alternate universe, with results that aren't anything like what we normally get. People don't pay, they watch it free, but they end up having only a sort of constant anger, and regardless, they don't stop using them. And the strongest example of that is probably Instagram. Now, studies have been done, and we know that it's about envy and addiction and creates loneliness, but I don't think we've quite nailed down how that works. And that's what I'd like to talk about today. Some things I've learned about our minds that may explain what's really going on and how to handle it. First, we're built to exist in groups. Having other people to provide examples, share work with us, and have children is crucial to our lives. And a key part of how our minds work is that our feelings kick in to make us pay attention to certain people. We've talked about that in real life, but Instagram works on a different level. I've found that it actually shows you situations that make your interest kick in in a way that isn't natural. Let me show you what I mean. Now, this picture was posted last week and it's got a million likes. A beautiful woman, half dressed, dazed, lying under you and staring into your eyes. Now, when in the course of a person's real life over all of history would they ever have this visual? But here's the thing. This is not that situation. It's an image on a screen. But our brain actually doesn't know the difference. Your feelings kick in and get you ready to do something. Now, let's look at this one. If you were living this life, if you were friends with these people, how many qualities would you have? Money, looks, the perfect environment, a successful mate, intimate friendship? Your brain kicks in to want those things. But it's not just that. Because even if you didn't live it, if you were there, you could see how to have it. When we're around people who have things we want, even if we aren't with those people, we still want to watch them so we can learn how to have what they have. That's what creates the feeling of interest in us. These supposed high value people provide potential benefits, partnerships, or lessons to us so we can be successful, safe, and happy ourselves. And do you think, I wanna do this. I wanna meet those people, I wanna be part of this. But this is not that natural situation, is it? You don't have the personal relationship with these people. They're not your friends. They won't share their resources with you. And on top of that, you can't gather the actual information that your mind is trying to gather about how to have those things yourself. Because these images, what these people have, very often is the result of surgeries, pills, Photoshop, being related to or marrying someone powerful, being randomly chosen by a movie or music producer, or outright crime. And that truth is concealed from you. In many cases, these people don't even realize how they got successful themselves. So what you get instead for advice and information is fortune cookie philosophy and word salad. And so, right off the bat, you can see that you're being drawn into a broken process. Your brain revs up because it expects to be able to benefit, but it gets nothing in return. At 12, I obsessively stalked everyone that was that online. I told myself I meant nothing. And on top of that, the obviously empty advice that's given actually is a subtle insult. It says to people, we're successful because we have those virtues. We do these things and you must not. And even if we don't have the words, we know that we're not getting what we came for. And that vague feeling of anger and frustration and confusion is what we're left with. Kids don't like Facebook. Right. No, everyone is sick of it. We're just drug addicts. Which is honestly perfectly justified. Try teasing a dog with a plate of food, then snatching it away and see what happens. But in our case, we're so used to it that we accept it. Now, Facebook does this too, but I found that Instagram is extra dangerous here. Because Facebook, at least partially, links people to some real friends. Instagram doesn't. It's purely a gallery of glass walls. It's not even set up to really give information, only to show you things that you want with no way to get them. Okay, and the next question is, how do they keep people around then if they don't give them what they want? This is where we start getting kind of dark because the feeling of interest fades quickly unless you replace it with something else to be interested in. Before you can get tired of looking at that one thing, it just moves you on to another distracting thing. So it goes on and on and takes in more and more people. The whole thing to me when you see it is a little heartbreaking. All of us flirting with nothing, trying to be friends with the person in front of us and all people who just want love or friendship or to learn how to be happy. Usually young people who are naturally looking to find a partner and learn how to establish themselves in the world. There's nothing wrong with that. But of course all anyone really gets is an advertisement. 
And if you look at the people who run it, all you ever hear about is a good mission, connecting people and this and that, which kind of implies that they're doing great things and it's your fault that you're upset. So what is Instagram then? Well, I do spend all my time studying entertainment and it's not entertainment. Entertainment ultimately creates happiness. To be honest, it's actually a people trap. And thus, naturally, it's not surrounded by positivity or treated like a great invention or discovery, just a source of vague anger that's often directed at the people who run it. We want to reject it because in a lot of ways it's really unnatural. And in fact, it couldn't have existed in the past. In the times when we developed our natural feelings, people were much closer. If you saw someone, they lived in the same place as you, in the same situation. If they could do something you couldn't, usually there was a trick you could learn by watching them. There weren't hidden things putting them where they were. And if people were in front of you, you couldn't hide the reality of your life. They would see if you spent a half hour posing yourself the right way, or that you have physical flaws like everyone else. So they wouldn't have a false idea of what they should be. But that honest connection we had was actually good for all of us. Like we've talked about, your personal possessions will only make you so happy. At a certain point, the pleasure cuts off. Diehard Cleveland fans, they, they, they were like, we want to experience one title in our lives. Okay, so the Cavs won, but what we really want is a Browns title. And now like everyone's on the Baker Mayfield thing. It's funny how that works. Yeah. And ultimately, what that natural mental process did, once you get the most for yourself, was force you to find other ways to be happy. And the only way to do that, naturally, is to be appreciated more by your group. To raise your value to them. To actually share what you had and help them. And get their appreciation in return. Which is new status. A new person who will help you. Which no possession can match. And which reactivates the happiness in even the most successful people. And this means that naturally we're all connected and our happiness depends on each other. But that process is a bit broken here. On both ends. No one is receiving from the people they look up to and no one is giving to the people looking up to them, except to count their likes and show them products. And so, it's half of what we're supposed to be. And I think that's the feeling of loneliness that people talk about. Now, given that, what kind of culture has the site actually created? To me, it's one that's a little bit worrying, because it judges people by what they have, when in reality, people's value is in what they give to the rest of us. What kind of house did Isaac Newton have? Who had the hottest wife or husband when people were inventing computers? Did your mom or dad have sweet jewelry? Does it matter to you? Those things are fun for the person themselves, but meaningless to the rest of us. And that is the key. If you want to be known in the real world, you have to do something that makes other people's lives better, or do something that they have to learn about to understand the world. Instagram, because it's only about things to look at, artificially elevates the people who have the most. But in life, those people are actually kind of replaceable. Kim Kardashian, after all, is being replaced by her sisters, who are just as rich, date men who are just as famous, but who also are younger and now more photogenic. But if you do something for others, like your close friends or your family, or the people who designed our world, you can't be replaced. And that, what you yourself create for others, is the only real measure of a person. It's the one thing that can't be bought or inherited or injected or married into or faked. And no matter where people's attention goes, it will always be there because it means something real for their lives. And I think personally that even the people who flaunt these things ultimately aren't very satisfied by them either. They always eventually try to do something worthwhile or at least attach themselves to people who have. And so that's the thing in life that we should actually focus on. And the same is true for Instagram. Unless it eventually creates something real for people, I don't think it'll be able to hold our attention forever. For now, thanks for listening, and remember that what we look at isn't always what matters. If you liked this video, give it a share, subscribe, and I'll be back later.